2020 is looking to be a huge year for the ever-growing roster of pixel art indie games, and we're here today to talk about the ones we are most looking forward to seeing more of. Sure, there'll be many more announced as the year goes on, and we can expect some of these to slip into 2021 and perhaps even beyond. In any case, we look forward to hearing your picks down in the comments. Let's kick ours off at number 20 with perhaps the biggest slippage risk of all in this entire countdown. The Last Night was premiered at the Microsoft press event at E3 in 2017, although since then it's been in the words of the developer, hit by legal, funding and other business issues. We think you'll all agree on the face of the trailer alone, this 2D platformer looks utterly captivating. He's hoping we get to see more of The Last Night before the end of the year. Up next, Coffee Talk drops via Steam towards the end of January. In this one, you play as a barista at a coffee house from an alternate reality Seattle in what's a heartfelt conversational sim and visual novel where human customers mix together with fantasy creatures. Having spent time with the demo, Coffee Talk looks set to feature some of the finest pixel art, character depictions and animations of any such game expected over the whole of this coming year. Up now at number 18, Pika Minoza is a pixel noir inspired action RPG where you play as a former police detective, all caught up within a web of lies, deceit, where you've been recruited by a dead mob boss to take out his former associates. This one should be out soon via Indiegogo. At number 17, and on the cusp of what some might call out as being on the wrong side of any pixel art Venn diagram, Lair of the Clockwork God is a fast-paced platforming point-and-click adventure where you're able to swap between the two main characters and so utilize their unique skills and characteristics, all in a race against time to stop all of the end-of-the-world scenarios happening at once. At number 16, and expected out sometime early this year, Yes, Your Grace is a kingdom management RPG where you receive visitors to your throne room and must decide who to appease and who to turn away. With a backdrop of limited supplies, the threat of war, the need to make strategic alliances while trying to secure your legacy, Yes, Your Grace could be one of the sleeper hits of the year. In most takes the number 15 slot and looks as good to see today as it did when we first had the chance to play it last year. Set to be an action, story-driven, puzzling platformer, it sees you control one of three characters within an interconnected story inside amongst other places an imposing long since abandoned castle. In most is expected onto home PC, Apple Arcade and the Nintendo Switch at a date that's TBA. Up next at number 14, and like last night, a touch of a gamble in thinking it might make it out this year, Iter, apologies for the pronunciation, was first announced all the way back in 2014. Since then, it's been picked up by the ever-reliable publisher Devolver Digital. Named after a divine substance in Norse mythology, players are cast as a shield maiden in what's described as a game featuring exceptional combat within formidable challenges which kind of puts us in mind of a pixel art souls-like experience. Perhaps like the long delayed below, this will drop quite unexpectedly. We have our fingers and toes crossed that it does. Next up at number 13, Zelta is a survival action game full of guts and gore. Having survived the onset of the zombie apocalypse, you're tasked with staying alive within an open world where you'll craft weapons, discover and loot necessary supplies, build and maintain shelters alone and with other survivors to further help your chances, well, of staying alive. That number 12, Flynn, son of Crimson, will see you play as Flynn, a young man having been orphaned as a child within a beautifully handcrafted 2D pixelated world threatened by a looming darkness. With an emphasis on player discovery and non-linear exploration, together with what appears to be a fast-paced and satisfying combat system, all within Metroidvania elements. Flynn, son of Crimson, should be coming to home PC alongside the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One. 
Up next, Ita is a bullet hell boss rush adventure that sees you play as a girl on a mission of revenge over the deaths of her family while guided by the spirit of her family's pet cat. Inspired by themes of personal struggle and perseverance, Ita will feature 18 bosses in what looks to be a super tight twin stick shooter that's accompanied by a suitably dramatic musical score. Said also to ship with accessibility options in what sounds a similar way to those within Celeste, Ita will come to the PC and Switch at some point in the year. Up now at number 10. Eastwood sees you play concurrently as an elderly gent called John and a girl called Sam. You can switch between the two and so by doing so, use their individual skills and abilities to solve puzzles and defeat enemies. Coming up now at number 9, Ministry of Broadcast is billed as a narrative-driven 2D cinematic platformer with a story set within a country divided by the wall with the only way to cross from one side to the other is to win a reality TV show that's organised by the administration. Said to offer something that's Orwellian mixed with a dash of Prince of Persia, Another World and Flashback, it's rife with dark humour and the absurdity of the world around us. Ministry of Broadcast will come to Steam and the Nintendo Switch. Up now at number 8. For Gone is, by the looks of things, something that takes huge inspiration from games such as Dead Cells and in some way may be considered somewhat of a tribute. Forgone will see you collect an arsenal of powerful weapons and upgradable skills, which you'll use to shoot and slash your way through majestic looking handcrafted pixel environments, hiding a treasure trove of secrets. Coming in at number 7, Massive Galaxy is a mashup of a point and click space adventure with turn based combat multiple branching storylines, all within a massive galaxy full of diverse cultures and space habitats. Eldest Soul Dar number 6 is a challenging looking boss rush game where you explore a long since abandoned citadel in search of the gods long lost and forgotten. Said to feature intense and brutal combat, with interesting NPCs and exciting quest system, Eldest Soul seems one well worth adding to your wish list. As we move into the top 5, Nycra is an existential narrative driven sci fi adventure with platforming sections, telling a story that tackles a hypothetical feeling of living without purpose. Your character will discover alien ruins and literature and soon realize things are not quite as they're being led to believe. At number 4, Scrounge Bringer comes from the developers behind Neuro Voider, with it offering a rapid paced free moving roguelite with platforming elements in what the team behind it are calling a cross between Dead Cells and Celeste. These type of games are made and broken by the tightness of the combat and in particular how the boss battles play out. From what we've seen of it so far, this could be rather special. With the audio coming from the same person responsible for the sounds of Downwell, Nuclear Throne and Bro Force, this will be a day one buy when it comes out on home PC and also to consoles with their platforms to be confirmed. Expected in early access in the first half of the year, Death Trash is a post end of the world action role playing game that will offer a semi-open world single player adventure together with optional split screen co-op. Featuring real time combat with hand painted locations and a large cast of characters to meet and fight with, you will also be able to customise your character and undertake any number of side quests. Death Trash appears super immersive and should make its way out of early access in around 12 months post launch. In the runners up slot, Backbone looks to take inspiration from film noir and will deliver a detective based adventure within a dark dystopian environment modelled on the real streets and vistas of some of the sites of Vancouver. All of this happens to look magnificent with the pixel art having undergone several iterations over the years with each animation being handcrafted frame by frame. 
couple all this with high definition 3D effects as seen in the dynamic lighting, water and fog, there's also a fabulous accompanying original jazz soundtrack. This is the point and click adventure of all of them out this year we can't wait to see more from. At number one and the pixel art game we are most looking forward to playing in 2020 is Carrion. Touted as a reverse horror game where you play the part of the monster rather than one of its hapless victims. Having spent time with the demo, it's a super gory metroidvania that sees you devour hapless humans which in turn sees you level up to gain new abilities and access new areas of the map. We love our metroidvanias and with Carrion coming to the home PC and most of the consoles, this is one disgustingly terrific looking experience that has us genuinely checking the web for weekly updates. And with that, many thanks for watching and we'll see you all again here soon for more indie game videos.